is Meg at Chasing Retro. I have a newsy video for you guys today. Um, the first bit of news is I'm going to show you a few of the things that I will be listing in my Etsy shop. Uh, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow, just be on the lookout. Not really sure when I'll get to them, um, but I wanted to show you those. Uh, so I was in an antique store this past weekend and came across this quilt top. Unfinished. The back of it is, I mean, there's no batting or anything yet. Uh, beautiful uh, vintage fabrics. I don't know how old. If any of you guys recognize any of these patterns, it can help me date this. Let me know. I don't know if any of them are feed sack. There's quite a lot of them that are very childlike. I think that's so cute, the little bunnies. Um, let's see, there was another one that had something that was very kitty looking. We've got some brown birds and a little tree here. Um, oh yeah, that's the bunnies again. Um, we've got this little scene of a church and school. So I will be, um, I don't feel bad about cutting this up because it's an unfinished quilt. It is stained. Uh, it looks like maybe it has been washed and some of the fabric was not washed beforehand, so it kind of faded onto itself. Um, perfect for junk journals, and <laughs> it doesn't bother me one bit. And it also makes me more able to cut it up. So I will be cutting this. I don't really know the full size of it until I do that. I will not know how big of a piece or pieces I will be putting in my shop. But if this is something that interests you, if maybe you never see these types of things out and about and would like to use pieces of this in your journals, or I love to make journal covers out of this. Uh, I've made some fabric cover journals in the past out of a quilt top, and I love the way they come out. So look for that to be headed to my shop also. I have a few books. I have a little golden book of Sleeping Beauty. Uh, normally, I wouldn't take the time to put little golden books in my shop, but I have too many. And so when I find them now at a good price, I decide I'm just going to share these with my shoppers and um, customers. And I also know that little golden books are getting harder to find and the prices keep going up and up and up and up. So I will try to price these as fairly as I can. It's really hard to do research on them. Um, it's quite time consuming to do that, but I like to kind of ask myself, what would I be willing to pay for it? So I'll be putting this one in the shop. I think this is copyright 86. Nope, original 86. This is the 2002 printing. I recognize that from this little, the golden logo they started adding here kind of gives that away. Uh, this is definitely 80s. This is a Cabbage Patch book. And it seems clean. The um, this is, I mean, it's very well loved. So this is coming apart. But if you're making it into a journal, it doesn't matter. And this little corner has been torn off. But it is just a little story based on Xavier, which I think is the creator of Cabbage Patch Kids. So if you're a Cabbage Patch fan, and or a child of the 80s and want a journal cover, this would be perfect. There's a little bit of writing on here with pen. Those of you who have magic skills to get that off, I'll let you do that. I'm so afraid I'm gonna mar a cover, so I normally don't try to remove that. I have two Christmas little golden books that will be headed to my shop. Um, this is Frosty the Snowman from 2004, originally 92, and this one is clean except for a little cat stamp and a little dog stamp. And then this is The Night Before Christmas, um, original 87, but this copyright is, not, is 2004 as well. So these are just some, some little books that will be headed to my shop. Uh, this is something that I don't know if I've shown y'all before. I kind of transitioned to Christmas, if you can tell with the little goldens. This is a very, very old box from Taylor's. I don't know if this is Lord and Taylor's, um, but 
On the back, it says Rutledge's and Martin's. Okay, so I was like, I don't know what this is. And inside was just Christmas cards that someone had collected as being sent to them from the Rutledge's and the Martin's. And I, I think a few other people. So judging from the date of these and how uh, personalized they are, like look, someone had these custom printed probably in the late 20s to late 30s, if I'm dating them correctly. Um, and so I was like, these must, these must be pretty important people because this was during the depression. So here's the full name of one of the families, Wiley and Annabelle Rutledge. So I Googled it and y'all, I found out that Wiley Rutledge was an associate justice of the Supreme Court from like 1930 something till maybe the late 50s. Uh, I could have my dates way off. It's been a while since I've looked at my research on this guy. But pretty cool. And this one, um, some of them look like she had signed them. This is one of the ones that I think he signed. So I thought about, you know, maybe an autograph auction house would want these. I don't know how important he was or whether this would be something considered signed by a celebrity or uh, I re reached out to several people and none of them were interested. So then I started thinking maybe I could donate these to the law school where he attended but that just kind of fell by the wayside as well. So here I am with all these Christmas cards from the Martins and I I couldn't figure out anything about this family other than I think that maybe they were school friends together from law school and he went on into politics um, but there are several of them this one literally is I don't know if this is actually pictures of the Martins but if so this is like Shutterfly 1929 edition. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is no small feat to have pictures of your family custom made into a card. It's just astounding to me. So here is the Rutledges again. Neil, Jean Ann, Mary Lou, Wiley, and Annabelle Rutledge. This looks like maybe his handwriting again. Uh, beautiful cards and then there's one that has oh I mixed some others in oops these are not Rutledge's as you can tell the Rutledge's are very serious in their card sending they didn't send funny Rudolph faces out uh, one of them has a note on the back from Annabelle Rutledge I don't know where that one went Uh, and she kind of gave a, um, from all the Rutledges to all the cables. So whoever the cables are, got a card. Maybe the cables is who had this box. Um, but yeah, pretty important people. Here it is. I think this is um, Annabelle's, love Annabelle. So this is his wife's little letter to her friend. And this is a custom card of what their house evidently looked like. So I thought about putting some of these in my shop. Um, these <laughs> obviously will, I'll, I'll probably price them a little bit up because they are unique and uh, almost antique and just kind of cool, um, you know, celebrity. But if any of you guys are interested in this kind of thing, you want, you want something really unique for your Christmas junk journal, <laughs> um, I will be trying to go through and decide which ones of these I'm going to share in my shop. I've held on to them long enough and I'm going to keep some. Don't worry. I'm not getting rid of all of them. I know this is like, you know, one of the finds of a lifetime, but I just, I don't want to hold on to them for another 30 years wondering if they're going to go up in value. I just, I just, you know, it's not really worth that to me. Uh, oh, things are falling. Okay, so the second bit of news that I have, I'll put this here for you to look at while I talk. I recently got this in Happy Mail. <laughs> so I've been a little bit quiet lately, as you've probably noticed. Um, as soon as I finished my battery of cookbook journals, I kind of took a back seat 
haven't made many videos, haven't made much of anything because I started working part-time. Now, it's a big deal for me because I stopped working a month before our first child was born 19 years ago. <laughs> now, I did other little things to make money here and there. I used to be a mom review blogger. Uh, I, and then, of course, I started my Etsy shop. So I was bringing in income, but I didn't have a formal job for 19 plus years. Um, so I'm back. And... <laughs> Uh, I was praying and asking God to show me what he wanted to do after our, our last homeschool child graduated in June, this, this next June, um, totally expecting to not even begin to look for anything until then. But this job literally fell in my lap and one thing after another confirmed to me that this was the path in which I should go and I needed to just go ahead and step into it. I did have the margin and the time to do so. Starting off part-time was ideal. Being able to work remote was the ultimate ideal, and both of those were met with this job. I do have to go into the office, you know, four or five times a year, and I have to drive about two and a half hours to get there. No big deal. I would do that any day instead of having to go into an office four or five hours a week, five minutes from my house. So I'm able to set my own schedule which is a blessing and yeah, I'm deep in the heart of training right now. It is something that I'm somewhat familiar with because I've been tied to this nonprofit for a long while, but I obviously have never worked for them. So I'm going through the training. It's probably gonna be a three to four month process before I feel confident enough to step into my, my role as what I am labeled within the organization. Now, I'm not gonna give details on here, but if you are extremely curious and want to know more, you are welcome to email me, um, those of you that I've gotten to know individually, and I'll be glad to share details, but I didn't wanna put that on the channel. So yes, um, I will still be making journals, don't worry. I'll still be making videos, but the days of me making four or five videos a week are probably not going to happen until you know I have vacation time or whatever um, but with with the way things are economically in the world and our family is stepping out of you know um, high school and we're now paying for college tuition one one about to be two um, it just became necessary and I know you guys understand that but what a blessing to be able to given to be able to be given a job that I prayed for and didn't really know that I needed and it was a perfect fit for me until it just kind of happened and God is just great like that. <laughs> so I am going to be working on, uh, I, got a, I have a couple of projects sort of on the back burner. I'm still working on a custom recipe journal and I'm also working on that journal for the family member that I mentioned. But it's November 7th guys and <laughs> I will be making Christmas journals this week. And I think I'm going to make several because I didn't realize till I went in the attic and got the box down how much ephemera and items I have for these journals. So I will be trying to create several in several different price points and categories and I'll explain that as I show you this little pile. But um, this is not gonna be a journal, this is for you know, ephemera. Uh, the first ones that I'm going to make are going to be mini journals made from pudding boxes and this corn mu corn muffin mix that I cut the top inch off of. So these will be three small journals with a um, an actual spine, a straight spine. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to cover these with paper or fabric. We'll see. I kind of have to go through my inventory in that regard. Um, I also thought about making a few journals out of vintage Christmas cards. This one not, this shape doesn't work that great, but squares are kind of awkward. So if I have a few that are this shape and size, I thought maybe I could make three or four, you know, 10 folded pages, very small, not really embellished, basically just a very small um, 
journal to toss in your purse or just to write down memories and gifts given and received for the year. So that I thought that would be fun. A lot of people make greeting card journals and I've been wanting to, so this is my chance. Uh, I also thought about making a little golden book junk journal or two or three. So the ones I have in my stock are, um, this one actually, this one may go into my shop as well. So you may or may not see this one in my shop. This one, um, this one was the one I went through last year. I showed you someone has written on every page. So if I use this, I will only be able to use the cover. The pages, um, I'm going to have to be very, I'm going to have to just fussy cut. It will not have the whole story in it, sadly. Um, but the cover is just unparalleled, isn't it? And it's a very old version. This one, of course, this is a given. I have to make this one into a journal. This one has some damage where it looks like it's been stuck down onto something and received some heat. But I'm just going to leave it like that because I just think that makes it better. Makes it look even older. And then I have this one. This is a very old one, um, retro looking one compared to this one. This is more 80s or 90s. And since most of my ephemera is retro based, I'll probably go with this one. I have this one. This is a newer one. In fact, it doesn't even feel like it's been opened. Yeah, I think I got these in Happy Mail. So these are great Christmas journal covers. So probably we'll be using those. Um, Last but not least, I have this beautiful, beautiful, large, I don't know if I have the energy for this, y'all. Um, this would be quite the feat. I may put this aside in, until next year. Um, but isn't it just the perfect cover? It's even off-center to allow for us to put that band of fabric. I think it's just like, it's calling in life was to become a journal cover. And this one I ordered last year to use, and I never did. This is by the famous evangelist preacher, uh, Peter Marshall. And his wife wrote the introduction. She's the one that wrote the book called Christie that the mini series was made out of. Um, but it's it's lovely. It's just very simple. I love the pictures in it, and the book itself is just charming and simple. So that's right now what my plans are. Uh, if I am able to do some process videos as I work on these, I will do so. If it's loud in the house or if I'm dealing with, um, you know. An, an afternoon where I know I'm going to have to stop and start a lot, I may just put it on, the camera on, and then edit, speed it up, and do a voiceover or not. So be patient with me as I get used to this new normal for me. And um, I appreciate all of you for being loyal customers and viewers so far. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm so behind watching all of your videos. So I'm slowly going through those in the evenings when I finally have a chance to sit down and watch those and comment. Um, I read every single one of the comments that you guys leave for me. I acknowledge them with a heart to let you know that I've read them. I may not be able to respond personally to all of them all the time unless I see a question and then I always try to. Um, but yeah, this is just, this is a learning curve for me, learning how to do something called time management. That's not mom time management. It's very different than job time management. So I appreciate all of you watching as always. I'm getting excited for Christmas and I hope you guys are too and I'll see you in the next one.